So guys, today I want to show you one of my favorite books. Creating the Ancient Armies from Peter Greenhill and Mario Venturi. It's a brilliant book if you want information about the Hundred Years' War. And it's a very nice history of miniatures, very beautifully, illus beautifully illustrated. So we start from some comments from the authors and uh, then you go to the table of contents. They're talking about heraldry, standards, foot soldiers, arch archers, civaric battle, details on the main pitch battles of the Hundred Years' War, uh, about what happened with Ransom, how Mali was fought. Um, they have uh, really everything you need to know, any information you need to know about these major battles that are here. Um, we start about the general, talking about the major pitch battles of the Hundred Years' War and what happened. Um, as you can put here, Gracie, this is where they focus. And then slowly, slowly, we're moving. This is Peter Greenhill. And this we're talking about, about moving about the history of miniatures. And they're talking about the style, the beginning of miniatures and different types, the Russians. I really don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about these miniatures. The upper, maybe people will know this uh, about, they're talking about dioramas with these types of miniatures. Many, many of you would know. I haven't seen them before. I mean, I've seen them. But um, um, they're talking about molds, uh, they're talking about painting. Um, it's it's a quite an extensive um, part of the book. It's in Italian and in English together. Um, again, very interesting heraldry. We'll go to this a bit later. The birth of heraldry, it's, it's, it, it, they're talking about in detail, but this is not only the Hundred Years' War, it can be for any era, I mean, of the, of the medieval era, but especially the Hundred Years' War, they're talking about the martel, um, st different styles of heraldry, and then they're talking about drawing this again, heraldry, how they sketch it is really great. Um, red English coat of Greenhill working reference sheet showing arms of knights who fought at Poitiers, who bore the field of gulls. So, a lot of details for everyone. And these are sketches of the guys. Maybe these miniatures are their miniatures, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't read this part, I'll tell you the truth. But it looks very interesting. I didn't have time. Courtney figures. Maybe this is a um, manufacturer, you may know. So we go from here, that's an extensive, talking about conversions. So a lot of beautiful illustrations and miniatures and a lot of information. So when you finish this part, here we're talking about very interesting, this is a very interesting part of the book. It talks about lesser known English combatants and French combatants at Poitiers. Very interesting. So you have unknown or not very famous knights uh, that you can use and this would spice up your armies obviously because you're going to have heraldry that is not very famous. Now let's get one. Jean, I, I cannot understand the sketch of what are they writing. Reynald Chemim of Poitiers, for example. That's quite interesting. Court of Arms. Here is um, Mario Venturi. And here we have the brilliant part of the book. We're talking about Crazy Poitiers and Agincourt, the brilliant uh, dioramas they have. And then they go into such an extraordinary detail. What happened to the battle? Who did what? Who died? Who didn't die? Who was the banner bearer? Who wore the oriflame? Uh, um, uh, important uh, figures that played role in, in the battle. It's, it's really extraordinary read. Extraordinary read with this beautiful photography. Here you have to go uh, over the diorama. You have the, you have the Poitiers diorama. Beautiful. Actually, absolutely beautiful. Again, extensive detail. Poitiers, who was, who did what? Who was a standard bearer? You can see here. Um, this is um, the king and his son. Of course, here you have um, uh, who is this guy? Thomas de Bonne. I don't know him. Well, I know him, but he's in the diorama. He, 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 they go into such a detailed information about characters that played an important role uh, in the battle. Of course, this is um, uh, Goliath de Malo, Archbishop of Sens. I have him also in my armies. And again, events, what happened, who saved whom, um, 
who fought first. Uh, extensive detail, this of course is the bearer of the Oriflame at uh, Agicon, Geoffrey de Charnay, who was killed by uh, Reginald Cobham. Here's Reginald Cobham um, killing Geoffrey de Charnay, I think, and taking, um, this is the, the flag of France, we have to discuss about this. Of course, here you have Capital de Bouche, uh, who attacked and won the battle for the French. Extreme detail of here who is who and uh, the heraldry and who you can use. Notable, of course, here is Sir James Audley. Sir James Audley, there's a whole paragraph on Sir James Audley, who was the, the, the knight who asked to attack first the French and gave uh, the honor by the Blanc Prince. So it's, it's a brilliant, extraordinary information. And here we have Azincourt, again, beautiful miniatures. All the information you require about Azincourt is here with small dioramas. Talking about personal melee, melee what happened, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, nobles fighting nobles, uh, uh, personal combats, everything is here. You can, you can create amazing armies in detail using this book. The Sunset of Chivalry, obviously, the knights uh, are butchered by the longbowmen. More information about the archers in the battle, at the battle. I hope you can see it well. Knights who participated, heraldry, everything. And here we have archers, here of course, Henry V with the royal banner, and Sir George Condrickton, of course, his, his um, banner bearer. And when we finish with these beautiful dioramas, you go here where you have the strategy of every battle, who was where, what was the movement exactly, so you can fight it if you want. Exactly the same here with Ajinko. This is um, Poitiers, uh, Christian Poitiers. Here is how England and France evolved during the Hundred Years' War. And here you have um, the, um, the family trees of, um, of England and France and how they interconnected. Now, a brilliant part of the book is the evolution of the armour. The armour uh, of the knights from Crecy to Agincourt and how it evolved. With brilliant sketches, look at these sketches, how the great helms involved and how the, the, the armour involved. Again, absolutely gorgeous and really gives you an idea how the armor evolved and what was added, bits and pieces that were added and make the armor so different. And again, really beautiful illustration from the guys. Extraordinary. The British, uh, the birth of white armor, 1390 to 1420. Again, in detail and of course with brilliant sketches. And here we have an amazing part of the book. Now we have the heraldry for the battles of Gracie Poitiers and Agincourt of almost every single famous knight. And here you have where he participated, if you see here, it has a CP. So that means Gracie Poitiers and this cross means he died, probably obviously in Gracie, in Poitiers. So for example, this guy, number 21, knight 21 is um, Jacques de Estroyels. I cannot pronounce French now. This guy guides the Israels, fought on crazy, but he died obviously, he had a cross. Now, here we go here. Again, this is crazy and Poitiers. This guy has a very interesting coat of arms, 56. 56 is Heinrich Munch von Basel. So this is a German guy who fought in crazy and died. So you have all this information about heraldry of knights who participated and if they, fought, if they fought both battles, if they fought in one battle or if they died. So this guy here, number 52, is Sher de Santorge. So he fought at Poitiers and he died. He didn't never fought at Crecy. So much heraldry, so much information. And here you have um, Crecy of Poitiers, English and allies. This was French and allies. This is English and allies. So you have here, for example, let's go to 59. Of course, this is a very famous English knight. Is Guillaume de Saint, Sir de Pommers. He fought at Poitiers. He survived, he didn't die. If you see here, you have this guy here. He has number 20. He is Jean de Mailly, Sir de Van Vran. He has an ex. He uh, was taken prisoner. I don't know where he fought, he fought at, Poitiers, at Agincourt. This is Agincourt. Yeah, here we are at Agincourt. This is Crecy and Poitiers. That's why you have C and P here. This is Crecy and Poitiers. Here we have Agincourt. You don't have because it's one battle. Here again. Let me try and zoom it in so you can see a bit better. So you see here, you have the heraldry, number 16. Down here, you cannot see in the bottom. You will have the name of um, uh, the, the, the bearer of this, Jean-Cher de Croix at Renty. 
So he died at Agincourt. This is the Agincourt. So we've go higher. So how many French died at Agincourt? Here, of course, number three, very famous, of course, is Charles de Artois, uh, Duke of Artois. So Duke of, who obviously died at Agincourt. Um, so many French passed away, died at Agincourt. If we go back and we see um, the heraldry for Crecy and Poitiers, you see the CP means that he fought in Crecy and in Poitiers, but he survived Reginald Cobham. This obviously is Reginald Cobham. Um, let's see someone who passed away, so you can see we'll go to the French here, for example. Uh, here, this guy, as we said, it's number 10. He is um, Jean de Cambrai. He fought at Poitiers, but he died. You see the cross, he didn't manage, he didn't, he didn't fight at Crecy. So, a brilliant book. I highly recommend it. Uh, a bit pricey, not extremely expensive. I think you can find it for, excuse me, I think you can find it from the author's wife directly, but there is everywhere. Um, but for guys who really want to know a lot about the Hundred Years War, it's, this book is the best. And you will enjoy also the history and the information you'll get about the battles. Anyway guys, this is for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. I oh, will talk to you soon. Have a brilliant summer everybody and um, we'll talk again. Bye bye.